This is Donald Parham. You're listening to Chargers Unleashed, part of the LA Football Network. Stay diggy. Hey, this is Chris Rump, the second Chargers outside linebacker, and make sure you check out Chargers Unleashed. Shout out to Chargers Unleashed, Sebastian Joseph Day, you know the vibes, we outside. Are you checking in with Mike Williams from the LA Chargers, and you're tuning in to Chargers Unleashed. You're listening to the Chargers Unleashed podcast with your host, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by Bet Online, Charger Bold Family, and Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein. It's time for redemption, Jake. You get to do this. You ready? You excited? You excited? Let's get right into this. We're not even going to waste any time. Rapid fire status. I mean, again, you're pro- anybody who's listening probably right now is probably going like, what, what, what type of intro was that? What the hell are we talking about on the show today? Well, if you had been watching or listening to the show last week, you'll know that Dan and I did our first ever dueling mock draft of the 2023 NFL season. And there were some rules, regulations that some of us had to abide by. And now we're going to flip the script a little bit as far as who has to abide by said rules. And everybody was talking about that Dan what won that first mock draft in a landslide. It was a KO punch by Wolkenstein uh, in the draft comparison. So we'll see if I can get a little bit of redemption, as Dan said, for this uh, dueling mock draft 2.0. Uh, but before we get into that, just want to remind everybody that Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest, uh, the fastest, and easiest ways to bet on all your favorite sports over at Bet Online. Head on over to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. And make sure to use that promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, Dan, I know that we had the rule set in place that last week, I got the luxury of being afforded a trade option, and I got to sift through my trade options and select the one that I thought was best. I traded traded with the Arizona Cardinals last week, getting the 33rd overall pick. So I got two seconds, two thirds, and a fourth. So I had five picks in the top four rounds. You are going to get the option to now have a trade and select your best trade option. Let's keep it as realistic as possible here, Wolkenstein. Whereas I have to now do what Dan did last week, and I have to stay pat and do the traditional Tom Telesco and just stay put and see. At what, least they're not what, trading up, right? Happens. At least they're not trading up. Thankfully, there is no option in this <laughs> to trade up. Uh, that is the least favorite option I think that anybody would want in this uncoupling draft for the Chargers. But let's get into this. Dan's already kicked it off, so let's hear about what his uh, trade offers are from his other teams, and let's see what he will make the shift to. For those listening, we've got two windows up here. Left side is my side. Right side is Jake's side. I will be drafting with a trade. Jake will be sticking and picking. Um, Jake, I'm going to be going first since we went first last time. I have trade. I have four trade offers: one from Dallas, one from Pittsburgh, one from the Jaguars, and one from the Bills. Um, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the Bills because that one's not great. I'm going to eliminate the Cowboys because that one's not great. Hmm. I'm looking at the Steelers. I'm looking at the Jaguars. Steelers are giving me a swap for pick 32. I also get an additional third round pick and a fourth round pick for 21. So I can stay in the first round. I kind of like that one. And the Jaguars are trading from 24 to 21. So I would get 24 and 56. I think I'm going with this one. I don't care about the other ones. I'm not going to be doing those. Again, let's keep it as realistic as possible, Wolkenstein. We, you know, we don't have Mike Didka up here uh, from the Saints. Okay, but, no, but I'm saying, okay, but, but eliminate all of these other ones. If we're just looking at this, what I'm, what we care about, swap 21 to 24, and I gain additional second round pick. Is that realistic? Definitely. Okay, I'm accepting that one. Okay, I am on the board. At 24, I've got folks like Bijan Robinson, Brian Branch, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, all there. Let me look at the edge group real quick. Will McDonald is there. Let's see. Corner, if- Keely Ringo, safety, Brian Branch. 
I'm interested in what Dan's going to do here. He literally just goes back three spots, could potentially still draft the player that he drafted in his mock draft last week, which basically was the biggest weight of the reason on why he won his mock draft last week. So let's see if he decides to go the same route. Picking up an additional second round pick while going back three spots and still has Bijan Robinson on the board. Again, I don't think that he's going to last this long. I'm going, I'm going a different I'm going a different route this year, this time. Mix it up. I like I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna go Dalton Kincaid. We all know how I feel about Dalton Kincaid. I'm doing it. I'm gonna see if I can get this strategy out a different way. I'm gonna fill in tight end need first. Dalton Kincaid. The Chargers get their Travis Kelsey-ish, at least we hope. And now. Jake is on the board. It's so interesting from where we were a month ago from. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already shooting myself in the foot because I already see what I have coming up. And at 34, Darnell Washington is still available. So whatever. Jake, you are up. You've got folks like Nolan Smith, B. John Robinson, Brian Branch, Michael Mayer, Kalijah Cansey, and Dom Kincaid, Brian Breesey, all these guys still available. Well, I think I would be a little bit of a hypocrite if I did not just, even with Bijan Robinson there, I have Nolan talked Smith. up Nolan Smith enough. And again, I try. <laughs> I don't want to try to do what you did last week, Dan, when you stuck in pick, and obviously Bijan Robinson fell to you at 21. So like you in this circumstance, not as crass as going the tight end route, regardless of whether or not it's Dal- Dalton Kincaid. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is an easy one. Nolan Give me Smith. Nolan Smith at 21. Okay. Dan, I am now up back on the board at 34. Already went tight end route. Let's look at the edge side. You may have to call off some of the the pitch porks and torches that are coming at you after that first round pick, Dan. And and I was just saying a minute ago, it's funny from where we were just a short month ago. Where can you imagine real quick? It was was all about tight ends. If I would have taken Bijan Robinson, then I could have Darnell Washington right now. Yeah, this would have been. Game, set, match. You're but definitely kicking yourself in the ass after that one, for sure. <laughs> Julius Brents is there. Let's look at the wide receiving core. We've got Julius Brents. Scott, Cedric Tillman, Rasheed Rice. Uh, Derek Hall there for Keanu Benton is there. I like him. Linebacker. Let's look at the running back situation. Ooh, to have an eight chains there. Talk about speed. There was just a report this morning talking about Devin E. Chain has a possibility of being the third running back taken in this draft. At pick 54. Speed can come in a bunch of different ways. I can get receiver later. I can get edge in theory um, later. Really? I mean, I should say the guys that I would want for edge are kind of gone. One of your guys that you drafted? I know. Or that that's one of your favorites on your edge class as far as a perfect fit goes. Derek Hall is sitting there standing, staring you right in the face. Yes, but at 54. Now, remember, Dan, you've got two, two picks, picks. I know. And three I picks, know. essentially. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, the guy that you're going to pass on now most likely will be there in just a minute. Yeah. All right, I'm doing it. I'll go Derek Hall for the edge position. No, yes. Derek Hall. <laughs> Derek sure. Hall. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick again because I'm just two picks later. Uh, It's between wide receiver and... (sighs) Yeah, I'm going running back. I'm going to go Devin A. Chain. I'm doing it. I'm going speed. I went defensive end. I went tight end, and I went running back, but also just offensive weapon. It's not bad. Jake, you are up at 54. I'll see how the board has played out for me. Ooh, Jameer Gibbs is available for you at 54. It wasn't there for me. <clears throat> Jack Campbell's still on the board at 44. I mean, that's that's thievery at this point. Luke um, Musgrave is there. Oh, Musgrave, Foskey. I already obviously addressed the edge position, so that eliminates Foskey in this circumstance. Just for kicks, show me the wide receiver group as it stands right now. Tyler Scott, Rasheed Rice, Tank Dell, Marvin Mims, Cedric Tillman, all still there. Keyshawn Booty. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go Luke Musgrave in this circumstance. 
getting him in the second round pick, as much as we've talked about the tight end position, kind of shifting back as far as the priorities goes for the Chargers out of the first round. And um, with Edge kind of taking that over, in my opinion, I had to go that route and to get an athletic talent like Musgrave in the second round for the tight end to round out this uh, group for the Chargers. I think that's that's the right way to go in this circumstance. And like you, I looked at the wide receiver group and I thought I can still grab another one a little bit later. I'm going different this route, Jake. So far, again, I have selected Dalton Kincaid. I've gotten Derek Hall, Devin A. Shane. So I've gone tight end, edge, running back. I need to go receiver now because if I don't do it now, it's going to be gone. The guys I'm looking at, Tyler Scott, Tank Dell, Marvin Mims. You know how big I am on Tank <laughs> Dell. That said, I think, I'm, again, I want to try to go different. I want to try to go different. Marvin Mims was in there as well for me and my top five favorites for the Chargers at wide receiver. I think he brings so much to the table. I'm going to go Marvin Mims, wide receiver. Jake, you are now up. What say you, sir? Dan Walkinson essentially stole my strategy here in the third round and probably even took the player that I would have targeted for uh-huh. the sweet spot in the third round for how this board follows me. Now, Marvin Mims, I'm going to tell you right now, it, if if we are in the third round and Marvin Mims is still on the board, I will Sprint. be very, very surprised. I think that he does not get past the second round. I think it's a damn gift that he is here in the third round regardless. And yes, I've got guys like Tyler Scott, Rasheed Rice, Nathaniel Tang Dell, Dan's boy, uh, Marvin Mims, who I just infatuated with for the Chargers as far as the kick return ability that he brings to the game on top of the speed threat that he can be to this wide receiver group. But like Dan, I'm going to change it up because I took Marvin Mims in my dueling mock draft uh, version one. I believe I selected him in the third round as well. And I will go with just some flat out speed in this draft. Now, do I, and I narrow it down between, I narrow it down between Tank Dell and Tyler Scott. Mm. And if it's me, I have Tank Dell above. Tyler Scott in my rankings. No That's question I. about it. Um, so I think that that would have to be the pick in this circumstance. Yeah. Give me Tank give me Dell. Tank Dell. Tank Dell pick by Jake Hefner. All right. Back to me. I am on pick number 125 in the fourth round. I've got one pick left. Oh, I'm very happy about this. I love. Okay. There's a couple guys here we haven't got to, we haven't got to talk about yet, Jake. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be doing our cornerback class here soon. I love Garrett Williams. They have him at 102 ranked player, and I think that is not correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have gone tight end, edge, running back, wide receiver. Hey, I got offensive weapons galore right now. Yeah, no kidding. Um Jair Brown is there. That's your boy. Um, I think I might need to go Garrett Williams here. I think that is criminal that he's still there. A lot of people are high on Darius Rush, which I am too. <laughs> but I, but I, think I'm, I think I'm higher on Garrett Williams. Don't talk yourself out of it. No, we'll I think I'm higher on Garrett Williams. I'm going to, before I forget, before I get crazy, let's look at the receivers again. Nope, don't need it. Okay, Garrett Williams. Stick and pick. There we go. I love this one. <laughs> I feel frisky. Jake, what you got? All right. Your last pick. All right. Let's see what we got here. How did the ball, how did the board fall in my favor? Deuce Vaughn went right before your pick, by the way. <sighs> let's see. Tyler Steen. Tyler Steen there be uh, a great offensive line depth for a selection there. Um, Let's see who else we got. Jatavius Martin, Byron Young. You can get the you can get Roshan Johnson. <sighs> You're tempting me now. You're tempting me now a little bit because I know that I have only dipped on the offensive side of the ball. Well, technically I've dipped twice. I got the tight end I want, I got the wide receiver I want. And I felt like I needed to go back to the defensive side of the ball, whether that was interior defensive line or at linebacker or at corner, depending on how the board fell to me. Um Show me each one of those positions real quick, Dan. Linebacker, you said? Show me linebacker. Okay, so Popo's up there. Dorian Williams, who's one of my favorites of the linebacker class, that's for sure. Linebacker class is kind of... It is. It is, but you have to... 
I mean, we know that we need that, it. Yeah. That position is yeah. going to be addressed. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't expect it to be addressed before day three. So Dorian Williams, if I was to select one, would probably be the pick there. Give me the interior defensive line group. Let's see. Tomorrow, Roy, Jumbo, Jack Roy. Cole Roy. Turner. Mm-mm-mm. Well, if I was to go with any of these, if we were looking at what position group really needs the help, and go ahead and just for kicks, Dan, show me the the cornerback group just to for comparison. Trey Clark, I like him too. Okay, so I would probably say that my better options here, as far as what the board has given me, is either at linebacker or interior defensive line. And I could, I could argue. That with the Chargers losing Fajoko, with with Tito coming back from injury, Covington coming back from injury, you also lost Joe Gaziano in free agency. Their depth is there's there's just a bunch of question marks behind that line, and you're going to need to fill that linebacker. However, <laughs> it's it's weird. How many question marks do you have on either side of the ball here? Because linebacker has just as many in this circumstance. So the linebacker to me feels way more thin at this point than interior defensive line. Yeah. As far as if you're thinking of the, the starters at that position, that makes absolute sense. I think <laughs> right now you got Eric Kendricks and whether, whether, I mean, whether Drew Tranquil stayed with this team or not, I always was a fan of adding Dorian Williams to this linebacker field. And I think that that's the way that I'm going to have to go. So with Kendricks, with Kenneth Murray, you don't have Troy Reader back there anymore. It's, we don't know if Kyle Van Oy is coming back to even play that position in the first place. I think there's more question marks on, on this board for me here now as it stands at the linebacker position that I'd have to get this move. So yeah, Dorian Williams would be the pick here. Dorian Williams selected by Jake Hefner. Okay. Interesting. So to recap, Jake Hefner went Nolan Smith at 21, Luke Musgrave at 54, the tight end. You got Tank Dell, my boy, at 85, and Dorian Williams, the linebacker out of Tulane, at 126. I, because I did not have to stick and pick, because I did last time, got to trade out of the first round, or at least out of 21. The haul that I received, Dalton Kincaid. I know people are going to be a little crazy about that one. Then I went Derek Hall, the edge at Auburn. Devin A. Chain, the speedster running back, offensive weapon. Marvin Mims, the do-it-all man. And Garrett Williams, who folks have not seen. That's value at 125. I got a total of five picks. Jake had four. Jake, how are you feeling about this one? Did you get your redemption? Do you feel you won? I mean, uh, you know, Nolan Smith falling to me here is just a tremendous luxury. Nobody yep. expects Nolan Smith to be High there. High value. I had Nolan sure. Smith and Bijan Robinson on the board. I didn't want to do the same scenario as Dan as last week, so I tried to make it a little bit different. And Nolan Smith, honestly, would be one of the exceptions that if he fell and Bijan Robinson was on the board, I would probably, you know, I would probably lean a little bit more towards that because I'm still expecting Austin Eckler to be part of this team come the start of the season. And getting Luke Musgrave, filling that tight end need it with the second round pick with an athletic freak like he is, yep. and getting Tank Dell and Dorian Williams, I'm okay with this. I, I am. Do I feel like I've gotten my redemption? Not entirely. Dan, I think, you, I think you actually saved yourself a little bit from the standpoint that you had the luxury of trading back, and regardless of whether or not Dalton Kincaid was your first round selection, for the fact that you were able to go back and still add a Devin E. Chain and a Marvin Mims with your additional picks that you had and also getting Derek Hall to fill that edge need. That's not bad. I, I feel like if you stuck in pick and you still selected Dalton Kincaid at 21, you know, people may be coming to with the bricks to your doorstep right now, but it, it may not be as bad as you think. <laughs> yes. Well, the thing is, I got an extra pick. So if I had a, if I was able to, if someone said, you know, Dalton Kincaid at 21, people might be upset. But if I could say I can get Dalton Kincaid and Devin A chain, they think they'd say, oh, okay, that's a little different. Um, Mock draft dueling status 2.0 complete. Dan, my, I love talking about myself in third person, clearly. I don't know why. Um, started this thing off 1-0. Did I go 2-0? Is it now tied 1-1? One one? Let us know in the comments who won this duel. As well as give us your, 
ideal first four selections of the charters. That what you would, would you guys to? have done if you were on the board when we were? Go back, rewind, check it out. Let us know. I feel uh, like we're going to see a lot of idiots, morons, what were you doing type of scenarios in the comment section. <laughs> hey, that's what we do. Content <laughs> creators, we get drafts. all the flack, all the fire. That's, that's, the, okay. that's the beauty of mock drafts. Everybody gets to tell us how wrong we are. So yes. that's and what again, happens. Shout out to NFL mock draft database. Uh, huge, huge shout out to them. They honestly, this thing's awesome when it works. Uh, this has been fun, Jake. We'll see. We'll see if I get a chance to go for the sweep later or if this thing has been tied up. Um, we got two more of these before the before draft day on April 27th. And, so. if, we, and if we end up being tied 2-2, there will be a game five for all the marbles. So hmm. will we get there? We'll see. I think right now it's 1-0. The ball is in your court. Listeners, viewers, let us know what you think. Who won? Uh, this has been fun. Jake. Next episode, we get to talk all things cornerbacks. Can't wait. Uh, this is a fun one. You have a little bit of a preview of how high I am on Garrett Williams. Kid's a stud. Uh, lots of folks there. Lots of length. Lots of size. Lots of speed. Cornerbacks a fun one. Can't wait. Anything else you want to tell the great friends before we head out? Just give me to April 27th already. All right. <laughs> McFly, put me in the DeLorean. Let's go. Let's go. For Jake Hefter, you can find him at Jake D. Hefter, myself at Dan W. Sports. Guys, gals, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you have a chance, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button anywhere you find it. Find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, and anywhere else you find your content. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you next time on Chargers Unleashed.